Hello everyone, grade sevens, it's another natural sciences lesson. I'm Helen and let's look at elements and classification of elements and for that we need to learn about the periodic table. Now remember in our last lesson we had a little bit of fun classifying sweets and we also spoke about how things in a shop are classified according to their characteristics or properties. So we would put all of our hard sweets in one group, all of our jelly-like sweets in another group, sweets covered with sugar for example, we would also in a shop make sure that all of the dairy products are together, all of the baked goods are together, that you're not going to find parts to fix your bicycle in the same place as you're going to find fresh vegetables. We're going to make sure that we classify and sort and organize things and that is going to make it easy for us to find them, to understand them, and if we develop new items or find a new kind of sweet, we can allocate it to its correct group based on its characteristics. Now, we classify objects then in our everyday life. In the same way, scientists can classify the elements into different groups. They can sort them, and they can organize them. And the principle of classification stays exactly the same. We are using properties or characteristics of the elements to sort them into their different groups. So what are some of the characteristics that scientists could use to sort our different elements? We have spoken uh, a couple of times about the element that we call sodium and how sodium explodes when it comes into contact with water. So we could use this characteristic of reactivity with water and we could look at all the elements we know and we could say these elements react explosively with water and these elements don't. Now we can take our group of elements that react with water and we could say some of them react mildly with water, others react dangerously and with great force when they come into contact with water. So even within a group we can still further classify and sort the elements. We could decide on, let's not talk about reactivity to water, but how does the element react when it's exposed to oxygen and to the air? Does it burn? Does it change color? Or is there no change at all? What about another characteristic? When we were looking at physical properties of matter, you learned about conductivity. That was the ability of the material to pass on heat energy or electrical energy. So we could take all our elements and we could group them according to conductivity. We could say this group of elements are good conductors of heat and electricity, but those elements are poor conductors or in fact insulators. So we can take a whole lot of the different properties that we have been discussing that matter has. We could take pH, for example, and we could say, is this element acidic or is it neutral or is it a base? So we can look at all of these different properties and we can start to classify the elements according to their properties. And the tool that we use to show our classification of all the elements is called the periodic table. Now we'll get to its name in a little while. We know that a table is a very handy tool for organizing ideas or objects or things into different 
columns and different rows. And each thing in one column is going to have similar characteristics and things in the same row are also going to have similar characteristics. So a table is a wonderful way of organizing not only information, but actual physical objects. And we see that our elements are sorted according to the periodic table. Now, let's remember from our lesson that we had previously, an element is a pure substance. It's only made up of one kind of matter, and it cannot be broken down into other kinds of matter or into other substances. So, for example, oxygen is an example of an element, and so is hydrogen an element. But we can take oxygen and chemically combine it with hydrogen to make a new compound called water. But because water has both oxygen and hydrogen in it, it isn't an element, it is a compound. Now, as scientists discovered more and more elements, more of these pure substances, they began to notice patterns in the way the elements behaved just as we were talking a little bit earlier. Could they conduct electricity? Could they conduct heat? Did they explode with water? Did they burn in oxygen? So they needed a way to organize all this information. And they kept discovering, they kept on discovering new kinds of elements. And it all became too much. We, we need to organize these elements. We will then, if we organize them and classify them, be able to understand them better. It will also help us, said the scientist, describe the properties of the elements. And this classification system of elements is called the periodic table. So a periodic table is simply a classification system for the different elements that we know so who started with this idea of let's make an element table? Well, Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev was a brilliant Russian scientist who developed the first classification table of all the elements that were known in his time. He first proposed his periodic table in 1872. So that's a long time ago. And the, the problem with that is that not all the elements were or had been discovered at that time. But Mendeleev's system, called the periodic table, didn't depend on things that we don't know. It depended on things that we did know or that scientists knew at that time. So since 1872, right up to today, many other scientists have made contributions to the original periodic table as new observations and new discoveries were made. And it's quite amazing when we learn that Mendeleev was able to use his periodic table, his 1872 periodic table, he was able to use it to predict the existence of elements that had not yet been discovered. So the way in which he organized the periodic table he got to a certain point and said, we should have an element here that behaves in this particular way, but there is no element. So he left a blank on his periodic table to say, this element must exist. We just haven't discovered it yet. And isn't that an exciting thing about science is that we can make predictions and then we can do investigations to test those predictions. And Every single one of the predictions that Mendeleev made, we have in fact discovered those elements and managed to complete his periodic table. So this is an example of the periodic table. We can see that the periodic table has many, many elements on it. Each little box or 
a little brick in the wall of the periodic table represents a different element. So let's try and unpack the structure of the periodic table to understand a little bit more about it. So we're going to ask some questions. First of all, can you see up here the word group and period? Well, the first question could be, what are groups and periods? We also see that there are a lot of numbers. Some of the numbers are written above the blocks, and some of the numbers are written inside the blocks. What are all those numbers for? And what are these letters? And this question is interesting as well. Why all the colors on our periodic table? So let's start with some of these questions to understand a little bit more about what we're looking at. We're going to start with the letters and the numbers. So each letter represents a different element. And so we can say that each one of these little blocks with its letters is one element. If we look at our highest number here, 118, it means that we know about 118 different elements. So the letters then are symbols for our different elements. And we're going to have a whole lesson on why the elements have different symbols and different names. The numbers also tell us something about where the element is found on the periodic table. And we're going to discover that these numbers that are written inside the block, those numbers are called, let's find a bit of space here, atomic numbers which sounds like quite a complicated word and um, term. So we're going to have a whole lesson on atomic numbers. But we also see that there are other numbers on the periodic table. Each column has its own number. We can see that there are one right up to 18 columns. And we call the columns, I'm going to just rub that out so that you can see the word clearly, we call the columns groups. So the groups are the columns on our periodic table. Just like I told you that a table has columns that go vertically and rows that go horizontally, we can see we've got the same thing happening in our periodic table. We've got columns of elements and we have rows of elements. But scientists, because they're scientists, must always name their rows and columns with special terms. So the columns are called groups. Going across, the rows are also numbered, and the rows are called the periods. And now we start to understand why this whole thing is called a periodic table. It's a table with rows and, I suppose, groups or columns of different elements. Why all the colors? Well, you will often see periodic tables that don't have color. But a lot of the periodic tables that we use to teach about the different elements do have color because the color helps us understand the different properties. So all the elements that are indicated with the same color tend to have the same characteristic. And that helps us to understand the properties. So the periodic table is a classification system. No fancier than your classification system of the suites that you made up. But this classification system is for the elements that make up all the matter, that make up 
all the materials in our world. We have identified more than a hundred different elements. In fact, we're at 118 right now. And we know that these elements combine chemically to make every single compound that we know. Isn't this periodic table quite an amazing way of sorting out things around us in the world so that we can be sure of properties, characteristics, and understand how the elements are going to react with each other in order to create the thousands and thousands of compounds that exist, not only here on Earth, but even out on other planets and in space. Thank you.